In all of my travels teaching and training people in the field of dance movement therapy, I meet many families from around the world, and you will be seeing them on my slides. What I teach and what families want to know is how to keep a loving bond, a loving relationship with their children. Even when they're having a really difficult time, I've never met a family who doesn't want a really loving relationship with their own children. And what I do in my specialization is helping people understand the power of nonverbal communication and how we can use dance and movement and nonverbal analysis to help you understand what someone is trying to say. Because what we know in dance movement therapy is that our body speaks and tells us about our experiences in our life. And what I emphasize is that dance, in its broadest interpretation, is a wonderful tool to help people understand how to connect and really develop and build this bond between themselves and their parents. What we're accenting in dance is the idea that our nonverbal expression and the details of our nonverbal expression really tell us about ourself and our past experiences. What we know in dance therapy that all, is that all movements have the power to share and to express something. So now I'm going to have you watch this sequence of me dancing with a little boy from Prague. And you're going to see some of the tools that we use, which are about mirroring and attuning to the person that we're moving with. Here, it's a child. And in this sequence, you're go it's going to be hard to know who's leading who because we're having such an attuned communication. We're trained to pay attention to the finest details, to the speed, to the tempo, to the fluidity, and even to the strength and the lightness of how someone is moving. And all of these qualities put together tell us about the person's what we call movement signature. What I like to say is that our bodies and our movements tell stories that speak about our experiences and our past and our history. Now, get ready. I'm going to show you a slide. I want you to really feel your response to this slide. Not just what you're thinking about the slide, but how it feels in your body. <laughs> now freeze. Hold your pose. Meet Myrta. She's a little baby from the Netherlands. Her parents sent me this photo. Pretend you're her parents and interact with her right now. <laughs> Notice how you feel in your body as you're interacting with her. This is the power of the nonverbal, right? Immediately, did you feel the energy in the room? Everything changes. You see this face and you respond back. One of my favorite infant mental health theorists, uh, Winnicott, he is a British psychoanalyst and a pediatrician, has a phrase that I just love. He says, when I look, I am seen, so I exist. What he's talking about here is the baby's experience of the mother attuning and mirroring back to the baby what the baby is showing her. And through that attuned, sensitive, reflective responsiveness, the mother and the baby start to create what I call a dancing dialogue. Winnicott actually states that it's the mother that introduces the baby to her body. And what he's talking about here is that the very sense of self, our very sense of existence, starts from this attuned experience in relationship to other. We don't just talk about the mother. We talk about the primary caregivers and that important role that they play in being reflective and being able to reflect back to the baby what the baby is feeling and experiencing. Winnicott actually has a statement where he says, there is no such thing as baby. There's only baby and mother. What he's talking about here is this idea that there is a two-way communication that's going on at all times in this way of relating. And part of this two-way communication also has, there's a job the baby has, which is the baby has to be able to provide cues that are easy enough to read. And it's that dance of the baby's responsiveness to mother, the mother's responsiveness, responsiveness to baby, that starts to build this dialogue. And what we know is that this communication begins at birth. Some people even talk about it beginning in utero. This way of speaking and connecting never ends. So the baby's very sense of being and feeling alive is dependent on these early experiences between self and other, and most often between the primary caregivers and the baby. What we're emphasizing here is that the baby's experience is first felt 
really experience through her, her nonverbal and multi-sensory levels. And so this is where the body and movement really come into play and are paramount for how we develop. Now, in this next set of slides, pay attention to how much is communicated body to body without a word being spoken. Bowlby, who's a contemporary of Winnicott and is known as the father of attachment theory, speaks about the role of the mother as being a safe haven or a safe base for the baby to wander from, to venture out from, and then to return back in times of perceived danger. And perceived danger is what is important there. If the baby's feeling uncomfortable in the environment, the baby needs to know where mother is so he can go back and trust that she's there for him. Here we see mom in just the tilt of her head and the embrace and the kind, soft embrace she has with her baby is connecting to her. And there's a lightness and a little smile emerging for baby, and off again she goes. What we're finding now in current infant mental health and neuroscience research is that there's really a scientific basis for this felt experience. What we know is that the brain and the way the brain develops is really built upon these nonverbal experiences based on relationships. Babies first learn about themselves and the world around them in the context of relationships that are felt on this nonverbal level. These experiences are felt through postures and gestures, the quality of someone's touch, where we place ourselves in space in relationship to the baby, even the rhythm and the timing of our actions. What we know is that it affects how the, body, the baby's brain actually gets wired. So early relationships and brain connections are among the key factors that set the tempo for the child's ability to regulate their mind and their body and help them manage through life's ups and downs. So now let's watch this dad and his sensitivity of connecting to his baby. Take a moment to look at this baby's face. And what's your reaction for a moment? What do you feel? Right? Now watch what happens. Do you see that softness? that tilt of the baby back to dad and dad towards the baby. He completely changed his facial gestures. And there they are. The baby's composed and able to engage again. So what we know is that sensitive parenting that's responsive and supportive to the baby's nonverbal actions and gestures actually helps the babies build their capacity to regulate their emotions, to calm their body down, and to help their brain work smoothly and effectively. So attuned, responsive, reflective reactions and interactions build the baby's capacity. This is good news for dance therapists because what we know here is that in essence, nonverbal movement experiences build a child's mind, their thinking skills, how they feel about themselves, and how they get along with others. And so dancing is a way to put all this research together while stimulating creativity. And what we know is that babies learn best through experiences with others, not through electronic media, not through videos, but rather through body-to-body -body felt experiences that they get to explore. In this era of so many sedentary activities and the rise of obesity with children, we need dance now more than ever, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I put all of this research together and have created a system called embodied parenting. And this is what I teach my families. Embodied parenting is parenting from the felt experience. Understanding the importance of reading your child's nonverbal cues and understanding how much you're communicating nonverbally as well. I have several concepts that I've created to help families understand this, and some of them you will recognize because they do come from dance therapy. It's a common dance therapy understanding that we all need to be seen and heard and understood for who we are. First and foremost, we need to be watched and witnessed from a place of wanting to know what we need without prejudice. We need to have, our parents need to be interested in understanding what it is we're trying to say rather than just correcting what it is that we're doing. Second, we all need to be heard. And heard, I'm speaking about the need to really be listened to. Rather than jumping to what we think our child is trying to say, we need to stop and listen.
the next is held. Now here, I'm speaking about the idea that we all need to know that we're being held in the minds of our parents. That babies need to know their parent is thinking about them and caring for them, even when they're not nearby. In this way, the baby starts to feel like the world is a safe place. And then, babies need to be hugged. Physical contact, loving, body-to-body, -body, playful physical contact is essential for babies to be able to feel themselves and also to feel connected to others. So, let's all do it. Shh. Notice, when you quiet down, you wait, watch, and listen. You can even feel it in this room. It allows you to take a breath and to really attend to what's going on around you. The next thing I teach parents to do is to attend. Attend to their baby, to really take a moment to pause and see what their baby is doing. What are their behaviors saying? What is the nonverbal message in their behaviors? Next, I ask them to reflect on the meaning of what these behaviors may be saying, but also to reflect on what's coming up for them when they're watching these behaviors. Not only what's coming up for them right there in the moment, but also what's coming up in regards to their own memory of how they're being parented, how that may be influencing the way they're responding to their baby. And thirdly, connect now back to your child from this understanding. So, I teach parents to attend, reflect, and connect. Let's try it. First we shh, then we attend, reflect, connect. Again, attend, reflect, connect. And in this way, we build this arc of understanding between our child and ourself, between our child and ourself. One of the other paramount parts of embodied parenting is really paying attention to the nonverbal cues. And through this way, we build a dancing dialogue. And it's created through paying attention to the quality of our eye contact, to the quality of our touch, to how we're using our bodies to communicate, and even where we place ourselves in space. I call this embraced space. It's about the idea that we can stay connected even when we're not right next to each other. Now imagine with me what the world would be like if we started connecting with our babies and dancing with them right from the beginning, truly dancing in this attuned way. It's my dream that we can spread the joy of dance around the world so that more families are dancing in this way and joining in the dancing dialogue so that all babies can feel seen, heard, held and hugged right from the beginning. Thank you.